Good morning, New Hope, and to everyone listening near and far. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper season we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Welcome to Sunday School. Let us pray. Father God, we just come right now, Lord. Thank you for another blessed day, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord, for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for the reason for this season, Lord, for we know that you are the reason for this season. And we thank you, Lord, for sending us our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we just thank you for how you have made so much provision for us, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for being who you are in our lives. And Lord, let us be reminded today the reason for Christmas, for we know that Jesus is the reason for the season. Lord, we thank you, Lord, we adore you, and Lord, we do appreciate you. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray, amen. Our subject today is called to participate in a promise. Our scripted print passage will come from Matthew, the first chapter, verses 18 through 25. Background information. On last Sunday, Matthew traced the genealogy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from his death to, to his resurrection. Today, our lesson highlights the miraculous birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mary, a young teenager living in a village of Nazareth, was engaged to be married to Joseph, a Jewish carpenter. One day, God sent the angel Gabriel to visit Mary. The angel told Mary that she would miraculously conceive a son by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that once the son was born, she would name him Jesus. At first, Mary was afraid and terrified about what the angel Gabriel had told her. And Mary questioned the angel. She asked the angel, how can this happen? The angel explained that the child would be God's own son and that nothing was impossible for God, that with God all things are possible. With humbleness in heart, Mary accepted what the angel Gabriel had told her. And today starts our lesson, a call to participate in a promise. Outline one. Destined to save from birth, verses 18 through 21. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was for faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Just as the angel had said, while Mary was engaged to Joseph, she miraculously became pregnant. But when she told Joseph, he likely felt disgrace. He knew the child was not his. And he felt that Mary had been unfaithful. So there we see, Joseph was ashamed of Mary and he knew the social stigma that would be attached to Mary by being unwed and pregnant. So under the Jewish law, Joseph knew that he had a right to divorce Mary, and he also knew that he could have her stoned to death because of this. 
But Joseph was a righteous man. He was a noble man. And although his, his initial reaction was to divorce Mary and break the engagement, he still loved Mary and he thought about how she may felt and he did not want to bring shame to her. So therefore he plotted to quietly divorce her. But as we see in the lesson, God sent an angel to Joseph and in the dream, the angel told Joseph that it was true that Mary would conceive a baby, but it would be by the Holy Spirit. And he also told Joseph to take Mary as his wife. And he told him he was chosen to be the father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he was instructed that when the baby was born to name him Jesus. And the angel also told Joseph that the baby would be the savior of the people and the savior of the world. In verse 21, the name Jesus means savior and it gives to us that our Lord and savior will be there for us. He will save us from all our sins and we will be cleansed by his atoning blood. There is something about the name of Jesus that makes everyone want to come into repentance when they hear John 3, 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. There is no other name like Jesus he is king of king, and he is Lord of Lord. The name of Jesus was so important to Mary, and it was so important to Joseph, that each one of them was instructed to name the baby Jesus. Get it into outline two. Destined to be with us from birth, verses 22 through 25. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angels of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The prophet Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 7 and 14, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. When the angels spoke to Joseph in a dream, and informed him that Mary had not been unfaithful to him and that the child she was carrying was conceived by the Holy Spirit, the angel informed Joseph that he was to name the baby Jesus, the name Jesus which means the Lord saves. Joseph could have focused on what people would have said about Mary's pregnancy, but he didn't. After hearing from the angels, and the confirmation he got that Mary, was, Mary birth would be conceived by the Holy Spirit, he knew right away that he must obey and listen to the angels, and he quickly took Mary to be his wife. Joseph believed everything that the angels had said to him, and he obeyed God. Joseph was a noble character. He was a humble man, and that was one reason why God chose him to be the Savior's earthly father. Joseph's obedience assisted in a family unit that would nurture our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into the world. God can use us mightily when we are humbled, just as he used Joseph to be our Savior earthly father. As you can see, God uses ordinary people who are willing to obey his will. God has a plan for each one of us, 
And before God asks us to do a duty, he already knows our heart and he knows our intentions before, we even, before he even asks us to do a task for him. Any woman could have bared our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But here we see our Lord chose Mary because Mary was humble. She was a virgin. And he also knew that Mary would take very good care of the child. He knew that Mary would obey his word and he knew that Mary would be the perfect one to fulfill his plan for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we look at Mary, God knew that Mary could handle the pressure of the public dealing with her pregnancy. And God also knew that Mary would be able to handle the pain and suffering of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross. Mary was the chosen one because God could trust her in his plan. God never makes mistakes. He didn't just pick Mary and Joseph. He knew their hearts. He also knew that together they would work together and that they would always give him the glory and the praise in his plan for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he also knew that he, he also knew that Mary and Joseph would also put everything first, making him first of everything in his life. As our lesson come to an end, the virgin birth is extremely important to Christians. It's important to our faith that we believe that Jesus Christ was conceived by the Holy Spirit. It's important for us to know that God came down and laid down his divinity to take on human, a human body to become our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The difference is with this conception is it was by the Holy Spirit and not by a human being as a male. For non-believers, this event may seem like a fairy tale. But for us as Christians, we believe that Jesus Christ was conceived by the Holy Spirit. We believe that he did take on a form of human. And we believe that he did die for our sins and he rose again so that we may live with him forever. We as believers also believe and participate in the celebration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's birth. Jesus' conception and birth was a divinely planned, orchestrated by our God so that we can have someone to come down to redeem, redeem us, to save us from our sins. And those who accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the virgin that was conceived by the Holy Spirit and not by man totally believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's miraculous birth. Although Joseph had nothing to do with the conception of Jesus, he played an important role in God's divine plan because he committed himself to Mary. He was there for Mary. He loved Mary. He was understanding of the situation. And we all know that Joseph could have easily said, I did not want to have a part of this, but because he obeyed the angels and he believed in the miraculous childbirth of Mary, he stood by her side. For most men, this would have been a difficult situation for them, but Joseph was committed, and he accepted the plan that God had for him. Like Joseph, we as believers will be presented with difficult situations in our lives, but we must decide whether we will listen to people or whether we will listen to God, trust him and obey him and let us lead us unto his plan for us. God has a plan for each of us. Jeremiah 29 and 11 tells us, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plan to give you hope and a future. Sometimes we may feel like no one understands us when we're going 
through our ups and downs in life. Jesus does understand us because he was once human. He knows and understands every struggle that we may go through in life. For this reason, we as believers should have the confidence and the assurance to know that we can go to God with anything and that he will listen to us, he will be there for us, and he will show us the way to overcome our difficulties in life. Here are just a few verses for us when we are struggling with the ups and downs in life, the uncertainty of life, or when we just don't know what may happen. Psalms 41 tells us, God is our refuge and our strength, our present help in times of trouble. Ephesians 4, 6 through 7 tells us, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has already done for you. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard our hearts and minds as we live in Christ Jesus. Matthew 6, 31 through 33 reminds us, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you have need of them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Lastly, Psalms 55 and 22. Cast all your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you, and he will never let the righteous be forsaken. We need to let God speak to us through these verses by applying these verses to our lives when we're going through our ups and downs in this struggle of life. We as Christians need to be confident and we must be assured that our Lord and Savior is there for us when he said he would never leave us nor forsake us, but we must reach out to him. In other words, as hard as it may seem right now, we must cast all our cares on him. We must stand on his word. We must trust him. And we must lean not to our own understanding, but lead to his understanding and his will for our life. We all know when life gets heavy, negative, and fearful, thoughts invade our minds. It's normal for us to run and trust our emotions instead of trusting in God. But we must trust God even when things are not like they seem. We must trust God to know that even though it may not look good, that it will work out for our good. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're dealing with something heavy, such as a lost or a terminal illness, it's completely normal for us to cry, for us to withdraw from others, for us to crawl up in a ball. It's normal. Just know that God knows the place where we're at. And he's still telling us today that we still must trust him. We must allow him to work it out for our good. And I also want to encourage you when you're going through your ups and downs in life, God's arms are always stretched wide open. Let us go to him. Let us allow him to comfort us. For we know that Matthews 5 and 4 tells us, Blessed are they that moan, for they shall be comforted. We also know as Christians, we're here for each other. It's so important for us in the body of Christ to share our pains and struggles with each other. Reach out to someone in your church family. Let them share in your pain and your struggles. For we were created for each other. Jesus is the answer to all of our life's problems. But it's up to us to trust him at his word and to allow him to work things out for our good. Too many of us spend time fighting God and doing things on our own and not allowing God to help us. 
Let us be like Joseph today. When a difficult situation comes upon us, let us listen. Let us search the scripture. Let us pray and ask God to show us his will and his way. Our challenge this week. This week, reflect on this question. How committed am I to obeying God's word? Pray and ask God to help you make decisions in ways that reflects obedience to his will. God will only command us to do things that are lined up in his word and in his will. After God told Joseph what to do, it did not matter what anybody said. He trusted what the angel said in his dream, and he trusted God to know that his will will be done. He didn't worry about what people would say because he knew who was in charge of his life. He knew who held his future in their hands. Let us not forget the Christian life is not a solo act. We were meant to share our pain and sorrow with each other. Just like today, Joseph was there for Mary in her uncertain times. He was there to accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He was there to protect Mary. Let us remember that God is in charge of our lives, not human beings, but God is in charge. And each one of us has a calling on our life. And it's so important that we allow God's will and God's way. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for all creations. Thank you, Lord, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we are not worthy of your goodness nor your mercy. But Lord, you loved us so much that you sent your only begotten son to die for our sins. And we thank you, Lord. Lord, we give call right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We know that we are called to participate in your promise to your people, Lord. Lord, touch us and Lord, teach us to be humble as we labor to do your will. Lord, give us courage and strength to tap into our gifts and to begin to use them for your glory, leading others to you and giving you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Lord, help us to be the Christian that you have called us to be, Lord. It is in your name, Jesus, that we do pray. Amen. Call to participate in a promise. Each one of us that are Christians have a calling. And it's so important that we walk and act in our calling. Even when our task seems big or it may seem little, we must continue to trust God, get in his word, and allow him to show us in his word his will for our life. We must allow him to work within us, to cleanse us. For we know that God can use us mightily when we are humbled and when we are obedient to his word. Call to participate in a promise. There's a job for each one of us to do. Let us go about our father's business, leading others to Christ. I love each of you. But of course, you know that God loves you more. Have a blessed week. A call to participate in a promise. Let us lead others to Christ. God bless.